In 21R2, Acumatica makes it possible for global organizations to manage multiple related companies in the same tenant. This is important because it allows those related companies to share customers, vendors, and inventory items, centralize approvals, and get real-time reports added up across those different companies. Looking back, this is how the companies used to be set up. You could have different companies within a tenant, and each company could interact with customers and vendors in a currency of choice. But what you could not do is you could not have a base currency for tax and other reporting purposes underneath the same tenant. Earlier, we introduced the concept of company groups. Company groups allow you to group companies together to provide specific visibility options. You can group companies together that have the same base currency. And now, in 21R2, you can move multiple company groups or individual companies underneath a single tenant. Multiple base currencies is supported in several different modules, as you see listed here. And several others are coming soon. We're launching this in managed availability mode. What does that mean? Managed availability means that everything's been tested, but only for specific use cases. Speaking of use cases, here's a number of things that work today in multiple base currencies. Within the application, I can get started by enabling multiple base currencies. Some of the features may not be supported if you do enable multiple base currencies, and the system will not let you do that. After enabling multiple base currencies, I can create a new ledger. It has a base currency of Canadian dollars. From here, I can drill into my Canadian company, and you can see the base currency ID is set there. And within there, I can set up different branches. Within the branches, I've set up an access role. I can also assign Canadian employees. So if I drill into Brady Sullivan, you can see under user info, I've assigned him access to the Canadian companies and branches. So let's take a look and see what things look like from Brady's perspective. Now, one of the first things I might want to do is create a time card since Brady's a consultant. And I'll just simply normalize this to keep things simple and submit it. Notice I have a global approval that's set to go to a US executive. So if I switch back over to my US company and go to my approvals area, you'll notice that I can approve Brady's time card from the US entity, thus centralizing approvals. While I'm here, let's take a look at some of the customers. I'm gonna look at this ABC Canada. Now, the first thing you'll notice is that the balances are kept in Canadian dollars. On the financial tab, you'll notice that I've restricted this visibility. This is required when you enable multiple base currencies. Now, I've created a company group called production companies. I could have just as well called this US companies so that I can enable visibility to all US companies as well. Within the billing tab, notice that I've assigned a parent account of ABC Holding. We're not yet able to consolidate balances across these organizations, but we can go ahead and relate them all to one another. Now, suppose that I want to show an example of how I can sell something to this company in Canadian dollars. I'll simply go to my action menu and create a sales order. Within the sales order, one of the things I need to do is pick a branch. If I tried to sell from products wholesale, the system shouldn't let me because that's a U.S.-based entity with a U.S.-based dollar. If I go back to my Canadian company, though, I can create the order. And, and my price, you'll notice, is quoted in Canadian dollars. I can maintain both Canadian and dollars U.S.-based pricing, depending on who's placing the order. Now, after my order's been set up, I can go through and create the shipment and do everything as I normally would. I'm going to do the quick process to manage this, and I'll speed the video while this goes on. Okay, so now that that's complete, I've generated some revenue for my Canadian branch, and I've actually done it from being inside the U.S. branch. The next thing I want to talk about is reporting. Getting consolidated reporting is one of the benefits of multiple base currencies. One of the first things I'll take a look at is this unit set. Notice that I've created a Canadian entity and linked it 
into as the same data source as all my US entities. I have to be careful though, because my consolidated report may be a mix of currencies. I'm gonna look at a translation definition that I've already created. In this case, I'm gonna convert everything I have in my Canadian actual ledger to a reporting ledger that can then be used to summarize data in US reports. Let's go back and take a look at a different report. That was our unit set, is one where I have a PL with multiple base currencies. So if I run that report now, I have a United States entity, I have my Canadian entity and Canadian dollars. This allows me to drill down into the details of the transactions. Remember, you didn't used to be able to do that. So if I drill into my widgets subaccount, we should be able to uncover that standard cost item that I just purchased and saw. Now going back year to date in US dollars has a little note here that I need to go ahead and prepare that currency translation before this number is up to date. So let's switch over and do that now. And you see there's not a whole lot going on here, but I'll go ahead and release it. And now if I come back and rerun my profit and loss report, or in this case, just simply refresh it, you'll see that this number has been increased and my total has been added together. I can also do cross company sales. I can also do cross company sales when performing related entity transactions. Acumatica simplifies the process by automatically creating several transactions. When you create a purchase order in one related entity, a sales order can automatically be created in the other. That sales order can be shipped and you can create an invoice. And then the corresponding purchase receipt and AP bill can also be automatically created in the related entity. If you want to dive deeper and install this environment for yourself, you can get a snapshot. To get there, go to pre-sales, set up demo environment, and scroll down until you see the Canadian entity. This is where you can get the snapshot. There's an Excel file that lists in detail all the different things that were added to the standard sales demonstration data to create this snapshot. Multi-company development has gone, undergone a long series of improvements over the past few releases. Multiple base currencies had several prerequisites which were created in earlier releases, and now we're ready to launch with managed availability in 2021 R2.